Hi, I'm Mal, and welcome to another episode of Mini Model Makes. In this episode, I'm going to be going through my latest hobby project, which is I'm currently doing some work on an Imperial Guard 7th Cavalry, uh, cavalry style uh, Vietnam inspired army. And I have just finished my first Valkyrie. So what I thought I would do is I'd get the overhead cam set up, go through the project, go through my paint scheme and, and what I've done on it. In future I hope to do an actual video painting another one I've got real time. But for this one I just thought I'd talk through this, some of the problems I had with it and some of the things that went well. Alright, so I'll get the overhead cam set up so we can have a proper look at this and I'll talk through it and I'll see you shortly. Okay. Here's the completed Valkyrie. Really amazing model, loved painting this. Before I go into the paint job on this, I'm just gonna quickly show you the base. Really, really simple base, so I'll get it out of the way. All I've done is, it's the normal paint scheme for the rest of my Imperial Guard. So it's sand and it's sand dust sprayed then a agrax earthshade wash and then a tyrant skull dry brush i got a piece of slate to use as a big rock stuck that on the base just to break it up a little bit that's exactly the same but with your shabti bone dry brush over the top of that as well little grass tufts you can get from any hobby supplier really really simple base just didn't have it in me to have it just as plain sand so just stuck a rock on very very basic get that out of the way get back to the valkyrie which is here so with this kit i wanted to paint everything i wanted to do a really good job of the cockpit and i wanted to paint the interior so i broke it down into sub assemblies and i'll go through what went well with that and what I will do differently next time because there were a fair few teething problems with it. Very, very quickly I'll just go through. What I did was um, the cockpit was a separate piece, the engines were separate, the wings separate and the, the tail assembly, the tail boom separate. So essentially I just had the little box section of the Valkyrie. What we'll do is I took some photographs of it painted up. I'll try and put those photographs over the top of this and onto this video so you can see the insides properly. But we've got door gunners and everything on this. I really went to town on it. Now, open the back door. A lot of people struggle with the back door on this. It just seems to want to fall open all the time with a lot of people's kits. I've not got the problem with that, I guess it's just making sure you, you, you do a really good job of, of gluing this section together. So, the interior, it's, I know it's really hard for you to see, but the interior is a spray of the Zandri dust sprayed on, and a pin wash of Agrax Earthshade, which you can see around the areas here then a dry brush of normal Zandri dust out of a pot and then a dry brush of the Yashabti bone over that so exactly the way I do my guardsman so it fits in all the metal work in there is the lead belcher and then a null oil wash over that and then over the top of that it's a quick little dry brush of iron breaker the piping on there I've done really simply as I say I've got photographs I'll, I can put up instead but the piping in there is just corvus black and null oil wash over that and then a quick little sort of fiddly dry brush of eshing grey on the pipe work buttons I've just done as random colours in there the green storage boxes and, and bins and other things 
are this Castellan green, a Null Oil wash, and then a quick highlight of Lauren Forest. Really simple. The lighting, what I've done with the lighting, there's method to the madness in all this. So all the light sections, I've it's exactly the same way I've done the metal, but then I've put a Stormhost silver layer on the actual lights themselves. This is just to, to sort of give them a really light appearance, make them stand out because, haha, heavy bolt has just fallen apart because I'm holding this upside down. The, I've used technical paints on the actual lights themselves. So the red is the Stormho Spirit Stone Red, technical. And then a green is Waystone Green. Theory behind that is I've put a red light and a green light at the tail end because red would be a tactical light anyway. You're not going to have white light when you're flying at night into battle. And the red means don't get out. Then a green light, get out. The Most of the other lights in there then, what I did, I put Cassandori yellow over the Stormhost silver. And it's given me sort of that effect, so that's sort of like a yellowy light fitting, which is pretty cool. I think it does its job. The gunners in there, they have two more red lights above them. Because the red lights are by the side doors, it's going to be tactical. So the red light gives them a chance to look at the weapons, change magazines or whatever they need to do if needed without breaking white you know white light for those of you who are in the military you don't or those of you who are not in the military you don't have white light if you can help it at night use red light instead so there's two red lights above the gunners as well the gunners are done exactly the, the way that i've been doing my guardsmen i'm just going to zoom in on them so they are zandri dust sprayed agrax earth shade wash dry brush of Zandri dust again and then a dry brush of you Shabti bone on the fatigues the green is the Castellan green a black null oil wash and then a highlight of Lauren forest over that and his arms sliding off a little bit I'm gonna have to fix that if I can but that's both gunners in there when I do my second Valkyrie I'm probably not gonna put the door gunners in to be fair it's nice if it's a one-off if you're doing one piece, but I, I wouldn't recommend it for the entire army. The guns themselves actually still move. They, they've been done how I do my metal. The casings are, are done in green, the same way I do, do my green. And that's, that's the interior. As I said, I've got separate pictures I'll show you of the, the interior that I can put over this feed to give you a better look at it, basically. That's them. If you can see, the doors slide open, and I'm gonna have to dig in there and get that heavy bolt out now. Uh, but the gunners are in there. You, you can just about make him out. So that was the interior painted. What I did after that was I taped up the doorways because the doors weren't on as I'd not put the wing sections on. Taped them up, made sure this ramp was slightly sealed as well at the back with some tape. Try to use proper model masking tape like the Tamiya stuff. If you use normal sellotape or anything like that it's going to pull your paint off afterwards. Then once all that was sealed and I knew nothing was going to get in, I sprayed all these parts with Dark Angels Green. I don't really like using black as, as a base coat. It, I find it hard to pick out the detail once I've sprayed a model black. So the Dark Angel Green helps me, helps my probably aging eyesight a little bit better. So all of it was sprayed Dark Angel Green. Then I used an airbrush and sprayed this Castellan Green uh, over the, the frame sections 
big thing with that is you don't need to use an airbrush you can use a normal brush it's it does exactly the same thing it's just the airbrush is a little bit quicker I could make a pass there actually there's probably more control because you know you're not going to get paint on anything if you brush it rather than airbrush it you might not have to seal it as much but it, it was just for speed it really does make things quicker but as I say you can still brush it on not a problem with that the engines were were separate as well what I did with those was I did spray those chaos black I then used normal lead belcher on those a null oil wash over the top of that and then a dry brush of the iron breaker so exactly the same way I've done all the metal on this the little exhausts on the wings and the landing gear I did exactly the same way exactly the same now because my army is air cavalry inspired I had a go at some freehand so this is the US 1st Cavalry Division badge in essence it's yellow, yellow and black and normally instead of the 7 they have a little horse's head because it's cavalry very iconic badge what I wanted to do was have a go at, at putting those badges on this now I had a look online because I thought oh military I'll be able to get some transfers not a problem for this I cannot get US cavalry transfers to save my life you just you just can't find them anywhere or um, they're in America and cost about 40 quid to post to you and even then there's only like two badges on the entire sheet of uh, decals or transfers depending on which side of the Atlantic you come from so had a go at hand painting I don't normally freehand I, I can't do it but I thought let's have a stab try and do it justice so the badge itself is Avaland Sunset and I, I did the shield sort of outline on it what I then did was I used the Corvus Black after that and I outlined the shield and then did the diagonal stripe going across it instead of a horse's head I was toying with with different ideas uh, one of them I was going to do like the Imperial Guard the, the winged skull or an Aquila instead of the horse's head on the badge I think that might look good not a chance I was going to freehand that so in the end because this is the seventh Cadian Air Cavalry I put sevens in there uh, in just sort of breaks it up and then to break up all the green on it as well on on the tail boom section I've done the same yellow again with the black seven and I put one behind the door now a lot of the time if I've got my door open that's going to be covered up just one of those things but it was just to ha I did this one first to practice having a go at the smaller one but that's another uh, cavalry badge there with the seven on so that's they're the actual sort of badges that I did I'm quite proud of those first first time I've really done him uh, you know so yeah a little rough around the edges but it, it's great at a tabletop distance so the actual green itself as I said I've, I've done the Dark Angels green I've done the airbrush of Castellan green over it what I then did was I pin washed all the recesses in fact I'll zoom in a bit more on camera on a section pin washed all the recesses and the you know the the sides of the raised areas that's all null oil really does make the model pop start to stand out goes around all the metal areas as well that I've, I've done here little null oil pin wash now for beginners out there pin wash you might not have heard the term it's just a way of, of putting a, a wash or an oil paint or something in, into recesses using the capillary action of the brush. I do have a video I've done on pin washing. Go hit it up. It's an Imperial Guard tank I've done. Works exactly the same as as for this model as well. Please go, go look up that when, when you can. After that, I've then done fine edge highlighting of... Lauren Forest again on on all the edges I'll see if we can bring it in and pick out an area uh, yep yeah, you can see it there the little fine edges down there they're all Lauren Forest 
that really does help the model pop as well fits in with the rest of my army and that that is the outer part of the Valkyrie really that's as simple as that which is good the things I'll say is with with the sub assemblies sub assembling the wings is fine the doors sort of slot in when you put the tail boom on because the doors fit between the actual box part of the transport model and the the boom itself they fit in between what I would probably have done is glued the two boom sections onto the box because I've super glued this on and I tried sort of shaving off little bits to make it attach properly and I had a bit of a nightmare with it to be fair so these boom sections in future I'll, I'll just glue on to my next one the engine sections are fine they just just glue on afterwards not a problem with those the wings they glue into the booms not a problem with those again because the booms are then on what I can do is put could have just put the it would have been easy to put the tail in because I had problems getting that on as well and that is the big learning point really reflecting on, on what I've done with this Valkyrie should have put these sections onto the onto the box but of course the the doors well suppose just paint paint the doors up first and then it's it's done so that's that bit now going on to the cockpit the cockpit is actually sealed up now see I went with the las cannon on this so onto the cockpit section itself I've I've actually glued it shut because I had problems with that as well don't use super glue on the canopies because I wasn't using super glue on the canopies and trying to glue it all in I used a little bit of PVA glue to glue the the outer frames on onto the canopy and then really it only worked best when I plastic glued them into the actual cockpit themselves but the cockpit I'll see if I've got photographs of the cockpit as well without this section on so I can pop onto the video as well is Top Gun inspired so that is actually Maverick with his helmet markings free handed on and Goose with his helmet markings free handed on not the best job you know early doors for me when it comes to free hand but good enough at a distance that you can sort of make out it's Maverick and Goose cockpit itself all the metal sections are done exactly the same as, as the outer metal sections I've used the uh, green paint which is, is it's waystone green technical paint I'm trying to think off the top of my head can't remember uh, on the screens and just little yellows blues and reds whatever you want to do on all all the dials in there the pilots are painted up exactly the same as the door gunners as I said they're just the helmet markings are different so Maverick's a uh, Cantor blue helmet Goose is a Mephisto on red helmet and then they've got the lines on there the green for the screen it is Waystone green which is in the little computer screen which is really prominent in, in the co-pilot section but yeah I've done the interior I've not cocked out and painted it all up black which a lot of people do or that's an idea if, if the cockpit section's daunting for you just spray it black and then it looks like you know tinted glass I've used the blue again on this section over the uh, Stormhouse Silver to make that sort of pop a little bit and the rocket pods it's the normal green and then I've done a Celestra grey on the rockets to begin with and then Ulthuan grey just to make them white done really simple but effective I, I think I then glued the cockpit section onto the main body of the aircraft after it was all done as far as transfers go I really want a model kit with transfer that's the big drawback to this Valkyrie kit is 
you don't get sort of aircraft transfers like you would, you know, if you'd bought a Tomcat or a Tornado or a Eurofighter Typhoon or something like, you know, you get really nice model aircraft kit decals transfers. And these, it's just an Imperial Guard tank, which is not great. But, um, what I've done is, on the tail boom, you've got the Cadia, the Cadian gate symbol, and the 7 for the 7th cav. I've dropped Cadias by the door ramp as well, so you know this is Cadia. And, I'd, I have an Elysian transfer sheet. I know, you don't get them anymore. But they've got like loads of little warning triangles on them so I've just put little warning triangles on certain parts of the aircraft just you know as a be careful if you're getting in here and then I've done sort of little simple things like skulls on there as, as a kill tally kind of thing I've got the Cadian transfers Ace of Spades as a unit identifier to separate it from other aircav units and um, that's very much inspired by the D-Day Normandy landings so my seventh would have a I've gone for the ace of spade sort of the spade because it's cool but other air cavalry units in the same army group could have the heart the diamond or the clubs then the lightning bolt which is the army identifier so if I tag on any other Imperial Guard units to this army, I do have a Death Corps Krieg tank company. What I might I'll put this symbol onto there, so they're part of the same army group. Just a, a quick bit of Imperial dogma on the door. Same again on this side on the boom. I've got the Cadian gate, Cadia itself, and and the unit number. And I'm a little piece de resistance. I went online on eBay and found these amazing transfers, which I'll just quickly put on, which are Top Gun for the Top Gun Tomcat, some amazing person who I've forgotten and deserves a hell of a lot of credit for. Has done these decals and they just go so well. So, um, as you can see, you've you've got the actual all, all the top gun bits and pieces and navy and numbers and stuff on there the main reason I was after this was it's got pilot call signs for Goose, Maverick, Iceman, uh, Slider, Merlin and Cougar so moving that out of the way trying to get it into focus you have got Lieutenant Pete Mitchell, Maverick and Lieutenant Nick Bradshaw Goose I need to put another layer of Lamy and Medium over those because it's the outer part of the decal still showing a little bit a little bit of Lamy and decal Lamy and Medium over the top of the decals will take off that shine so that'll be alright but they're there so cool, absolutely adore those transfers. What I'll try and do is, I'll try and find out where I got them from and I can credit the guy on the description for the video because it's remiss of me not to give him a mention after that. But that is my Imperial Guard Valkyrie and the colour schemes for it. I'm sorry it's not an actual proper painting video but I wanted to go with this without having to worry about videoing anything at the same time. Uh, learn from the experiences or learn from my experiences on there regarding the sub assemblies and what I would do. I'd, I'd glue this section, these two sections onto the main part of the box. Everything else can, can stay off. I'll try and look up those uh, photographs that I took of the interior and cockpit as well for you so you get a better look at them and I think that is it what I'll do is I'll wrap up this video now for you and um, what I will try to do I'll quickly add on is 
I do have more Valkyries to paint as an Urkav army, so I'm going to have about three or four Valkyries by the time it's done. I will try and do a full how I paint video in real time, painting up the Valkyrie for you at some point in the future. But that will be in the future. I've, I've got so much on my plate at the moment. Okay. See you shortly. So that was my video on my recently painted Valkyrie. I had really good fun painting this. It is such an amazing kit. So if you are going to be getting one soon, I can't recommend it enough. Absolutely brilliant kit to work on. And from me talking through the project, hopefully you'll avoid some of the problems that I had with it. Absolutely lovely. I think it is such a beautiful kit. So I'll just pop that back on this shelf out of the way. So not much more to say on that apart from please like, subscribe and share. Thank you very much for watching. It amazes me that I've got even over 100 subscribers. I think I'm on about 130 last time I checked. Just for a little guy doing his hobby at home. Brilliant. Please send me messages. Anything you want me maybe to see me do or any questions please get in touch. I love it when I get feedback because that's uh, a big reason why I carry on doing the videos is, is it's brilliant when someone gets in touch with me and tells me a little bit about their hobby. I think it's great. So as I said, please like, subscribe and share. I have a Mini Model Makes Facebook page. You can catch some of the projects I'm doing on there and um, I, I sort of put up when videos are coming out and things on there. Uh, and you can get in touch with me on there, which would be absolutely great, as well as on the videos. And hopefully see you soon. Stay safe. Bye for now.